Hi, I'm Zach, and this is joint work with Walter Cullen. In this paper, we consider the online convex optimization setting, where we make no boundless assumption on the domain or uh, on the norm of the gradients. And our goal is to design completely parameter-free algorithms, which require no tuning and still achieve optimal regret bounds in online convex optimization. A quick overview over the setting. In OCO, uh, at each round t, uh, the learner or the algorithm outputs a, a vector w in some convex bounded or unbounded set. And then the environment reveals a convex loss function f, and the learner suffers a loss f at the comparative, uh, at the output uh, w. The goal is to minimize the regret with respect to any comparative vector w, where the regret is just a difference between the sum of the losses of the learner minus the sum of the losses at the comparative vector w. Since the losses are convex, the regret can be bounded uh, from, a, by, from above in terms of the gradients at the output. And the term that I highlighted here in blue is known as the linearized regret. And in order to get a regret bound, it is standard to just upper bound the linearized regret. And so it suffices to restrict our attention uh, to algorithms which observe the gradients at the outputs instead of the whole function f. So our goal is to design such algorithms uh, that are that that are completely parameter free and achieve this type of regret bound, um, where L here is just an upper bound on the norm of the gradients, which I'll refer to as the Lipschitz constant from now on. Uh, we don't want to make any assumptions on 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 the domain, and we don't want to assume knowledge of the Lipschitz constant L. And the price we pay, we, we, are, we are willing to pay for this, is an additive polynomial term in the norm of the comparator. So parameter-free algorithms have many applications. Um, first, they provide improved regret bounds uh, in the bounded uh, online convex optimization setting. So if the norm of the comparator is less than uh, D, then parameter-free algorithms replace the typical regret bounds that scale with D uh, with another regret bound whose main term scales with the norm of the comparator instead. And so when the norm of the comparator is small, uh, this, new, this new regret bound is, is better than the previous one. Uh, another application in online learning of linear models, uh, it, it can be shown that all parameter-free algorithms can be uh, used in a way to achieve the same regret bound as online gradient descent. Uh, with optimally tuned learning rate. Uh, the optimal tuning of, the, tuning of the learning rate depends on the norm of the comparator, which of course is not known in advance. Another application is in prediction with expert advice, where each expert has uh, a different loss range, uh, and the loss range may, may take negative values. Um, and here we want um, an algorithm uh, whose regret with respect to a given expert to scale with the loss range of that expert. And to my knowledge, parameter-free uh, algor algorithms are the only type of algorithms that can achieve this in the linear runtime in the number of experts and the horizon t. All of this is thanks to the expression of the regret bound, namely the fact that it scales with the norm of the comparator. But all these applications require uh, assume knowledge of the Lipschitz constant L, and uh, we actually want to adapt to the Lipschitz constant L in this work. Um, a quick overview over existing results in the bounded domain. In the bounded domain setting, uh, when uh, the norm of the comparator is less than D, uh, there exist uh, algorithms uh, uh, that achieve the, this type of regret bound. They are scale-free in the sense that they can adapt to the Lipschitz constant L. And crucially, if you multiply the losses by some positive constant C, the outputs of the algorithm do not change. On the other hand, if you are given the Lipschitz constant, or you know a bound on the norm of the gradients, then there exists another type of algorithms uh, called parameter-free, uh, whose regret uh, scales with the norm of the comparator W. Orabona and, and Pale uh, posed uh, a question in, in call 216 of whether there exists an algorithm that is simultaneously scale-free and parameter-free. Uh, one negative result uh, in this direction was published in 2017, 
which says that if you insist on uh, a regret bound that scales linearly up to log factors in the norm of the comparator, then your regret uh, basically grows exponentially in the horizon. Um, on the positive, on positive side, uh, and, and another result shows that if you uh, relax the requirement that you regret scales linearly with, with the comparator norm and you allow some polynomial dependence in the comparator norm, then you can still achieve a square root, square root t regret. But the algorithm that achieves this isn't uh, scale-free. Uh, in particular, if you scale the losses by some positive constant c, then the outputs do change. Uh, what's more, um, what's hiding in this O tilde expression is a log ratio uh, term between the norm of the gradients and a parameter epsilon of the algorithm. And since we don't want to assume knowledge of the Lipschitz constant, when in other words, since we don't want to assume we know an upper bound on the norm of the gradients, um, there's no choice of epsilon that would prevent this log ratio from being arbitrarily large uh, in the worst case. Um, another another thing is we, we don't know if the exponent here in the norm of the of the comparator is optimal. And another open question posed by Kutkowski uh, was, um, can we replace the sum of the norm of the gradients by the sum of the norm of the gradient squares, which is typically smaller? So in this work, we'll, we answer all of these questions. And to simplify notation in what follows, I'm just going to introduce uh, this term vt, which is the sum of the norm of the gradient squares, and bt, which is the sum of the norm of the gradients. Um, so First, our first contribution is the, the first scale-free parameter-free algorithm, which we call FreeGrad, which has this regret bound. Uh, this algorithm doesn't uh, assume any bound on the domain and also adapts to Lipschitz constant L. The price we pay for this level of adaptivity is this lower order term that I uh, circled in red. Um, we, do not, we do not have any log ratio uh, problem hiding in the O tilde expression. And we introduced a second algorithm, which can be viewed as a matrix version of the first one, uh, which has this regret bound, uh, where the VT term here is the sum of the outer product of the gradients. So the term that I highlighted here in red um, essentially measures the, the, the variance along uh, the comparator direction. And in some cases, this can be much smaller than the sum of the norm of the gradient squares. But the price we pay for this uh, uh, additional uh, adaptivity is a log determinant, which can be as large as the dimension up to some log factors. What's worth mentioning here is that uh, when the Lipschitz constant is known to the algorithm, then we don't have to pay for these lower order terms that I crossed. Uh, another interesting thing is since both of these algorithms are parameter free, if we simply add the predictions from these algorithms, then we get a new algorithm whose regret is the minimum regret from both of these algorithms. And this is a nice property of parameter-free algorithms, uh, which was uh, uh, shown uh, by Kutkowski in 2019. Uh, the final contribution is um, we showed that if we insist, we, we show a new lower bound uh, that, that says that if you insist on a regret that is a root t, then the lower order term that appeared uh, in, in our regrets in the previous slide is basically unavoidable. In particular, this answers the open question on whether we can replace BT by VT, where I recall the definitions here of BT and VT. Uh, this also shows that the exponent in the norm of the comparator cannot be improved. So in order to uh, build our uh, algorithms, we consider an intermediate setting with hints. Uh, these hints basically provide an upper bound on, on the gradients before these gradients are revealed. And we, des we build our final algorithm uh, thanks to an existing re reduction, which says that if you have an algorithm A which accesses the hints, uh, the hints, then there exists an algorithm B which does not access the hints uh, and whose regrets is at most the regret of A uh, plus uh, some lower order terms. And so this basically says that it suffices to focus on uh, algorithm A, which has access to the hints, 
and we can aim for uh, the, the type of regret that we are after. And so for the matrix version, we want uh, this type of regret with the algorithm A. Uh, so this is what we do with free, with free grad. Um, in order to derive the output of free grad, we consider uh, this new potential function. And our goal, where, where GT here is just the sum of the, of the gradients, our goal is to pick the outputs of free grad uh, so that the potential function is decreasing in, in the length of the history. And this is actually going to lead to the regret bound that we're after, as I'm going to show in the next slide. But first, let me introduce uh, this function psi, and this was, would simplify notation in what follows. So if the potential functions are decreasing in the length of the history, then uh, just by the definition of the potential function, we get this inequality. And by some standard Fenchel duality uh, techniques, we can uh, get this inequality, which holds for any vector w. And it can be shown that the psi star function, which is just the Fenchel dual of, of psi, is bounded from above by the norm of the comparator times the square root vt. Uh, and so if we do some rearranging in the previous inequality, uh, we, we recover the first type of regret bound that we are after. And so now the question is, how can we choose uh, the output of free grad, uh, free grad to make the potential functions decreasing in the length of the history? Well, we will set the output of free grad to be equal to this W star, which is just the solution of this partial derivative equation involving the potential function. So setting W equal to W star, essentially ensures that locally uh, around a small gradients, the potential function at time t plus one is uh, l l does not exceed the potential function at time t. And so if you choose any other uh, output w that is not equal to w star and for which the partial derivative is not equal to zero, you can always find a gradient that makes the potential function at t plus one greater than the potential function at t. So it turns out that the, uh, the W star, the solution of this uh, partial derivative equation has a nice closed form expression. And it says that the output of free grad is aligned with the sum uh, of the previous gradients multiplied by some uh, scalar. I should stress here that the choice W equal W star only ensures that the potential function at time t plus one is, is no, not larger than the potential function at time t locally, but we want this to hold uh, globally for all uh, possible gradients. And this is actually what we show in, in, in the next, uh, in our main technical results. It shows that if you pick w to be equal to w star, then indeed the potential functions are decreasing in the length of the history. And so using uh, differential duality arguments that I showed before, we recover the first uh, regret bound uh, that we are after. Uh, however, we are not done here because this O tilde expression hides a log ratio between the last hint and the initial hint. And depending on the range of the gradients, this log ratio could in principle be arbitrarily large. And so to avoid this issue, we um, apply a recent, recently introduced restart trick we adapt it to the setting uh, with hints and where the domain is unbounded. And we essentially restart the algorithm whenever the ratio between the last hint and the initial hint is greater than some threshold that depends on the norm of the previous gradients. And what it, this essentially does is replace the log ratio between the hints uh, by another log term that is at, at most log t plus two, and so it does not explode uh, no matter what, what range um, of the gradients. Uh, the price we pay for this in terms of the regret uh, is just an additive uh, lower order term that scales with the norm of the comparator and the Lipschitz constant. For matrix free grad, the story is similar, uh, except that we have a uh, another potential function. Uh, but the way we derive the outputs is the same. We just set the, the, the partial derivative of the potential function to be zero, and we solve for w. And this ensures that the potential functions are decreasing in the length of the history. And this leads to the regret band that, that we are after. So in conclusion, we uh, presented the first 
uh, scale-free and parameter-free algorithms for online convex optimization, and by that answering uh, the call 2016 open problem. Um, we also provide uh, new lower bounds uh, for algorithms which insist on a square root t regret bound. Thank you for listening.